Hi friends, this is E, the Empty Nester. Rather than doing a classroom setup, I'm just going to do a punch. I'm not a teacher, but I would like to um, transfer a lot of scientific information into just regular old words so that everyone understands how plants grow and what's involved. We take a plant, we'll assume this is the plant, that we put outside if we cut the ground and till the ground we've taken all the life that was already there and disrupted it we put our plant in the ground the sun shines on it it hooks itself up to a battery that um, keeps it green and recharged I'll look at this side on the last one Next, um, the battery's working, and then life starts to br go back into the area that was once, you know, the ground broken, and starts to connect up to the plant because the plant's full of energy, and this from the sun shining on it. Then next thing you know, water comes. It's got its solar panels all connected up. Its battery is fully charged and all the um, mycorrhizal, fungi, bacteria, protozoa, everything that it needs is connected up to it. And um, it's feeding them, they're feeding it, and then the worms are coming to improve the soil, the insects, the animals. The soil is already full of all the um, nitrogen, phosphate, calcium, everything that it needs. And the beneficial fungi is collecting it from the soil feeding the plant the plants feeding it and everything is balanced and then the moon comes into effect with um, daylight versus sunlight as long as there's some kind of light the plant is taking in some form of energy and this explains daylight um, neutral long day and short day when there's total darkness, the plant can shut down and rust, and everybody underground takes care of it. When there's any type of light, the plant continues to um, charge on the battery a little bit and doesn't get to rust. And no rust means a very unhealthy plant. So a plant does need to sleep just like we do. Now on to the garden show. Hi friends, this is E, the Empty Nester. Today we're going to talk about dirt versus soil and um, how plants grow. Basically, dirt, you <laughs> grow, you know, weeds and soil, you grow vegetation, plants, healthy living things. The world is full of um, balance, both negative and positive. We need the bad guys and the good guys to um, control everything. The soil um, is living or it's dead. You know, dirt is dead, soil is living. And what happens with soil is everything is working in balance. With dirt, it's got more bad guys than good guys and there's reasons for it you know and i'll talk a little bit about how to change dirt into soil all right so deep <laughs> she has to come and jump in the picture see i like digging in dirt and making soil oh. are you gonna be a camera hog today it looks that way so we have to, you know, come back in just a second when we get done with all the petting and talk a little bit more about making dirt into soil. Right here is a good example of dirt. Um, nothing's growing in it. It's pretty much clay, nothing alive. It's full of water, but the miracle of nature, um, grass is starting to grow into it, 
Worms are starting to come to it. You know, no matter what, nature self heals. By putting this plastic on the ground here, you've killed, um, oh, it's kind of too heavy enough. Here's an example. See the roots starting to grow? Life is starting to come into this dirt. And with life, there's worms. And there's um, micro Horizons are missing, but here's a micro horizon. Wood just jumped into the picture, and this will create a fungus that'll start spreading into this and turning this dirt into soil. So nothing actually really stays dead unless you keep poison in it. Turn this open. find some life. I know I'm destructing, destroying, I'm being the bad guy today, but look at all the worms colonizing this. And then, I don't know if you can see the mycorrhizal in this, but I'll show you in another bud. And then when you look under here, you've pretty much stopped life. Oh. Okay, the black plastic has stopped growing life, but it hasn't stopped the worms. The worms are still under here rebuilding the soil structure and adding air to the area that can't breathe. And then we've got the little roly-poly guy here, and we've got wood products climbing under here, dead grass, so this right here even underneath of the plastic, there's some holes allowing water to come in. And the world is recreating it, creating itself. You know, all these guys are at work. And including the little white guy here. But this um, planet can self-heal. Self and this is proof of it, you know, when we stop adding toxins and pollutants and um, chemicals to the ground, then, you know, we stop um, killing these guys. Let them get their job done. And when we use a pesticide to kill a bad guy, we're killing the good guys too. And when the pesticide goes away and goes into the groundwater and into the rest of the world's drinking water, then, um, the bad guys get stronger and come back and move back in, and the good guys are a little slow to get back in, but like you see, eventually, you know, the good guys get back in here and get to work. Now I'll take you over to the, this bed. Last year, this bed um, didn't grow anything, you know. This is an area that's full of juggalone and from the oak, I'm not oak, from the walnut tree up front. I added topsoil and then I'm adding, you know, kitchen scraps, you know, and attracting worms in here. Just like I did with the potato bed next door. And when you take a look in here, you'll see you know, this bed is teeming with, you know, activity. When you, what do you call it, till the ground, what you're doing is taking, let's say we just made this all perfect and everybody's working together and healthy and happy. When you take a tiller and go down through here 
and till everything up and you're bringing up the dirt that's underneath here see look at all the worms that work here already from putting the food there these worms are coming up from down there in the dirt and then that squiggly guy there I don't know what he is a centipede lots of leggies let me bring you closer See that squiggly guy? But the world is healing itself here just with a little bit of added food scraps, which is basically turning into compost. And then here's just a little bit of plastic that shouldn't be in there, but it is. And then something metal. So there's iron breaking up in this bed right here. There's a worm at work, but look at all this life. Just from adding a little bit of living food to it. So the answer to, you know, turning our garden without using fertilizers and chemicals is adding compost, you know, to the soil either composting with life or with already done up life. What I see is a lot of white stuff and I'm gonna have my grandson take some to school and figure out if this is salt or what it is. We'll come over here where the grass is. See if we can see the mycorrhizal fungal activity. All I see is a ton of white stuff, and there's the see the white stuff. Mycorrhizal fungus acts like a second set of roots that brings um, nutrition into the plants. The plants produce carbon or uh, carbs and. Um, it feeds the mycorrhizal fungus and it turns around and feeds the plant what it needs and then the sun comes in and feeds it sunshine the water comes in and feeds it water it's a constant circle of life you know life feeding it life then it grows and grows and eventually feeds us we give it carbon dioxide it gives us oxygen Everything, you know, is a transfer of energy. And when we disrupt the transfer, then we have a lack of balance. And all that needs to happen is a little bit of time and a little bit of compost and everything's happy and healthy again. We're going to talk about soil versus dirt today. If you take a look at this area, you'll see green grass and it looks like a driveway path to destruction. The only thing um, sparsely here is a little bit of grass. Uh, the dandelions um, s s basically tell you there is a good amount of nitrogen. There's one violet, so there's not an abundance of um, life and then this I forgot the name I don't know if it's dead nettle or I'll look it up and write it in underneath here but this area is basically if you step on the ground see how it sinks grubs and moles have taken over the area the grubs feed the moles and you know we're always out here see how the lawnmower um, sunk into the ground more and then you can smash the ground down the moles have uh, moles, are moles you know eaten 
tunnels. So there's another one. Let's see how you do that, and then you compress the ground and lose the um, oxygen in the ground and turn it into um, what do you call that? Dirt instead of soil. So my thoughts are I'm gonna um, add clover, white clover to this area and bring in an abundance of nitrogen which will also bring in an abundance of um, what do you call this? Uh, dandelions. And their big taproot goes down to the ground and they're actually here healing the ground. You know, bringing up all the nutrients needed. And I'm going to just plant some corn in this area and let clovers and weeds and dandelions feed it. Hey look, a dandelion. You know what that means? It's potato planting time. The soil is warm enough to send them up so it's warm enough to grow.